Hello everybody, it's Jodie here from Decorous Vintage Designs and welcome to another furniture tutorial. This is the perfect piece for those who are bohemian lovers out there and lovers of colour. It's a very inspired Moroccan look, um, very rustic and I just had a lot of fun creating this so hopefully you guys will enjoy this video too. Okay, so what I have behind me is a wonderful old Rossmore piece of furniture. So this is a very, very solid, well-built piece of furniture. Um, I believe probably from around the 1950s and it probably would have belonged to quite a well-off family, I imagine. So it was a very shiny piece of furniture. Um, it's had loads and loads of, hang on, just waiting for the dog. He's done. We've taken some of that sheen off and I have done that through using Dixie Bell's White Lightning. So White Lightning takes off all of that kind of um, varnish and icky stuff and dirt and grime. Um, in this case the varnish is too kind of well on there. I've then gone and got a 120 grit piece of uh, sandpaper and then just given it a good scuff sand um, and this just makes the wood a little bit grittier and a little bit more porous so then you um, it just helps the paint to kind of absorb and stick to it a little bit better. Okay so to get started with today I have my oval medium brush, very thick brush with lots of bristles, bristly bristles and I've got caviar which is um, Dixie Belle's blackest black. So for this I am not going to be using any water, I'm, I am just going to put the caviar straight onto the furniture. I'm also leaving the pools um, and I'm going to be painting over these um, today as well. While painting this part, don't worry too much about brush strokes. What you really want is a nice thick texture um, and, and really get the paint into that grain. We're going to be layering lots of different colours on here so brush strokes don't really matter at this point. Right, so up next I've got the Gulf, which is a lovely turquoise colour and kind of similar to my top actually. So I am going to now put a layer over the top of this caviar. This caviar is pretty much dry, um, there are a few um, bits and pieces in there that are still kind of damp and that's okay um, because we're going for a rustic look and I do want some of the black to peek through and I won't be using water again for this part. As you're painting this you almost want it to kind of look scratchy um, and because we're not using water it is going to create this very scratchy look, this very worn rustic look and just make sure that you have some of the black peeking from underneath that turquoise as well. a good idea when painting uh, to follow the grain so if you've got something that's longer vertically then use your brush strokes go up and down with your brush strokes where if something's more horizontal like the drawer above then use left and right brush strokes and this is just a general rule that I follow that always just seems to work for me also at this point don't worry about the brush strokes um, and again we're going for this rustic look so some of those brush strokes are definitely going to peek through especially if we're letting some of the caviar um, shine through some of this turquoise as well. I am also using the oval medium brush for this part as well um, which is a synthetic brush by Dixie Belle and this is just to make sure that I can get, because it's nice and thick, I can get plenty of paint on there all at once. As you can see by not using water and dry brushing on the gulf then I have this very grainy look and a lot of the black is actually still peeking through. Okay so now that it's all dry up next we have some cobalt which is a lovely vibrant blue um, and it doesn't really matter what brush that you use for this I've just opted for a flat medium just to help me get into those details. 
I've also watered it down quite a bit. Um, this is so, when I paint it, it's almost like a kind of watercolour. Um, it's so that it's translucent and you can still see some of the gulf, uh, sorry, the gulf and the caviar underneath um, and that is shining through the cobalt. So as you can see, it's darker in some areas and much thinner in others and this is just going to allow more for a textured rustic look. I'm also putting some watered down peacock in the middle there um, but you don't really need to do this all you need to do to kind of repeat that peacock look is just to add more water to your cobalt and thin it out even more and you will get the exact same look. Next up is tree frog green which is a very vibrant green, very pigmented and very bright and again it's I'm kind of just, it's, it's watered down a little bit and I'm using my sprayer to help it move um, and the sprayer just has plain old water in it and I'm blending it down into some of that cobalt. This is your chance just to really have a play, it's by no means a perfect look like many of my looks and you can just have a play around with different brush strokes and different textures and you know different thickness and things like that. But anyway, next up is Mermaid Tail which is a green turquoise, um, it's kind of the greener version of the Gulf. You don't necessarily need to add this in if you don't want, I was just going for different variations. Um, you can just water down again the tree frog green a little bit if you just want to add a little bit of a highlight to your piece. Next up we have Barn Red which is a very lovely warm red, it has a little bit of brown in it. Um, you can mist your piece of furniture, you can mist your brush, I'll do both, it's up to you. But I am again diluting this and I am also letting it drip. I am focusing this red more around the edges and the details of the piece and I'm kind of almost dragging it down um, and then I'm getting a rag and I am just sort of tapping it. So I, I love drips, don't get me wrong, but I always like the very sort of soft diluted drips and I'm not very into them as they get very thick and spindly down at the bottom. So yeah, so I'm just trying different things. I've now got a paint scraper um, and I'm scraping that along the edges. That will also take off a little bit of paint underneath so I won't need to sand and it will offer a distressed look and I'm just going back and forth with my tree frog green, my water and my barn red and you know just trying different things just to kind of add a little bit of depth to this piece and more rusticness. So what also happens as it drips and you know you do get those spindly kind of things at the bottom there and you get your rag, um, when you do mop up those bottom drips um, it will peel away the paint underneath which I do quite like so as you can see some of the gulf is actually poking through where I have um, removed some of those drips. So next I've got some cobalt blue and I'm just going in there again just to kind of blend that into the um, tree frog green a little bit more and you know just just to create this very watery look. Next up we have one of the new stencils by Dixie Belle and this is called the Morocco stencil. I've already um, completed the other side and now I just want to show you guys how I did this door. I am also using the new Dixie Belle mousses. So these mousses are, that I am using are in garnet and then amber and then golden gem. They are very thick but not quite as thick as wax very pigmented and also they also almost go on like a metallic paint, like a really nice moussey thick metallic paint. So at the top there I have used the garnet which is a lovely dark red, in the middle I am using the um, amber which to me is like a coppery colour and I am blending that into the garnet and then at the bottom there I will be using the golden gem and I'm just because they are water based and because they do have a very thick paint like texture it means that you can blend them and I am using these to kind of make the door pop a little bit more and to get that very Moroccan look. 
I'm focusing now back on the drawers because I just felt there wasn't enough colour or paint on them and they looked a little bit washed out. So I'm coming back in with my tree frog green and I'm just painting that around the edges again and also on the pulls so that we get a build up of colour on the pulls as well as the um, wood on the drawers. What I have here is just a cheap chip brush, so nothing expensive and it's nat naturally bristled so it means that I will get more texture and I am just dry brushing that onto this piece. I now have some diluted antebellum blue, it's probably about a 50-50 mixture of antebellum blue paint with water and I'm spritzing this all over the piece. I am then getting my water mister and spritzing it with just clear water, plain old water and letting it drip down. Again as it drips down I am going to use my kitchen towel and this technique is called ragging and this is just going to give a bit of a watery effect to this as though you know there's been some water that has settled on here over time and has now been washed away. Just make sure that you use a really old water mister for this because it does tend to clog up the misters eventually. Now that the furniture is nice and saturated I am coming in again with a little bit more barn red and I am just again using a cheap chip brush and focusing that also around the edges and around the pulls as well and any details. So I'm just using this to create a bit more of um, a bit more drama and a bit more emphasis on the drawers and here I'm using a just a putty knife again just to scrape that downwards a little bit and if you do use a putty knife it's always better to make sure that your furniture is wet first and use a little bit of paint at a time and that way your paint is easier to control. If you do feel like you've put on your paint too thickly then don't worry because you can always just mist it with water, let it drip a little bit, you could grab a rag or a bit of kitchen towel and you know just, just dab it a little bit or just use your brush and pull it down. So don't panic, you can just do any of those techniques if ever you use just that bit too much um, paint. So if you have a look at the colour wheel, um, red is pretty much opposite blue and green on the colour wheel. So what this means is by adding it um, on top of the blue and green, it's creating drama and contrast and really makes all of the other colours pop and stand out. I also just want to mention that with the mousses they do take around 30 minutes to dry and 24 hours to cure so if you are going to go back in there after, your, after you've applied your mousses and use loads of water um, you are better doing that, you, you're better leaving it for a day or 24 hours or whatever and then going in and, and applying you know, your watery looks otherwise you might just um, make your nice stenciling um, run a little bit and yeah you just need to be careful of that. So I'm just going back in now with all of my colours and various techniques that I've already used and I'm just building up these layers very gradually and that it's always easier to build things up gradually rather than put on lots of paint and then really struggle to kind of get rid of it or hide it or whatever. So I don't want any of these colours to be really glaring and to really thickly stand out. I want all of the colours to be very soft, I want them to look kind of watery and a little bit weathered just to give a more realistic and natural weathered sort of rustic look. So if you look at Moroccan walls you will see that there's always lots of very bright colours, usually a lot of contrasting colours on there and they're often also very, um, whilst the colours are very bright, the actual fade between the colours is very soft and that's kind of what I'm going for here. So whenever you work on a piece like this, just take your time, build it up slowly and just see what works. I mean, I wasn't sure if all of this red was going to work and that's why, and because red is such a vibrant colour and it contrasts so vividly against the blue and green. I did not want to go in there and be like, whew, and throw on loads and loads of red. Um, I just wanted to go in there and do it softly, softly and make sure that it works with the rest of the piece. And as you can see here, a watered down red that is built up very slowly is working much better than what it looked like when it was really thick and bright.
So I've decided I want to make these panels on the doors pop even more. So I have gone and got my gemstone mousse in amber, which is like that coppery colour. In my head it's always, I always use it as a copper, so to me it's copper even though it is technically an amber colour. I've got a fan brush and I am just basically applying this all towards all of the indents around the edges. I'm doing this very rustically, there are going to be little gaps and it's going to be thicker in some areas than others just to get this realistically worn look. So now that the whole piece is completely dry, I have got my clear wax, my Best Dang Wax and Clear by Dixie Bell and a nice large round wax brush and I'm applying that all over the um, piece of furniture. I have then gone and got my white and I am just applying this to the top of the drawers and top of the doors and that again is just to help make some of that vibrancy look a little bit faded. White wax is perfect for softening looks. And then lastly I have some Best Dang Wax in black and I am putting that down near where the cobalt is. And this is just going to make the cobalt a little bit darker, emphasise the colour and just make it pop a little bit more. It will really add a lot of depth to this um, and I am applying it around the edges of the doors as well um, just to make them look old and worn. So where the cobalt is and around any of the door and drawer edges. Because Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax is water-based, don't worry if you use a little bit too much. All you need to do is grab a damp rag and just wipe it away and it will disappear. <laughs> so I hope you guys have really enjoyed this tutorial today. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye bye.